Hello everyone. A couple of minutes late, sorry about that. Hope everyone had a great weekend and on to all of our mothers that are joining us today. Hey, happy Mother's Day. I'm glad you guys are on board with us today and it's been a blessing to be able to be with you guys again today and I'm so thrilled and honored that we are having um, the best time of our lives. You know, you might say, well, Lord, you know, I don't think I'm having the best time of my life. You really are because we can purposely choose today to say, you know what, I am going to make today the best day ever because we only have this one day. And after this one beautiful day is gone, we don't, we'll never have that day again. And we'll have another new day. You know, with, I, I'm learning, it's so funny when people ask me, I, I'm learning every day to understand the scriptures more. You know, it's so easy when you grow up and you go to Bible college, you know, um, go to Israel, you know, learn in school, you know, learn the Greek language, Hebrew language, Aramaic language. And, and it's easy to sort of get so caught up in the, in the motion or the notion of, of, of knowledge um, without actually diving into deep, the very now moment, the reality that has been given to us supernaturally uh, and also, also gracefully has been given to us to dive into that moment of this uh, of this of this moment that God's given us and so it's so easy to sort of get caught up in the motions but it's harder to be able to say I am disrespecting this now moment this this time in which I'm learning to be still and know and uh, and so that's one of the things I want to bring to you guys today is really bringing into that reality uh, your the real reality. Let me put it this way: bringing into your reality the real reality. And basically, what that's saying is this: is we're going to teach you a little bit more how to relax today, which I know everyone's going to say, "Amen." But also learning what that looks like. And so some of the things, and what we're talking about today, by the way, we've had a lot of people, a lot of people sign up for the Book of the Month program this month. It's been very, very, very great, but this is the Book of the Month, Creating an Atmosphere of Peace. How many of you have actually got this book already and you've already started reading it? It's a pretty good, thick book, and I give a lot of good um, examples in here, things you can do, um, how to begin to do this and that, and relaxing, and from a biblical point of view, you know, we bring forth a lot of different things in it as well. So, but I wanted to bring today, if we could a little bit of things that I think I believe will help each one of you into learning how to relax, but also learning a little bit more of, of um, what the joy of the Lord you know looks like. And I say that because the fact that we begin to I'm actually looking back in a chapter here for you guys, and that is le learning to understand that you know we throw around scripture so easily, you know, and uh, you know, in the sense of like, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And, and a part of me is wanting so bad to say, you know, it's easy to throw that around, but what does that look like to somebody? I mean, if I just say, hey, you know, you're down and depressed, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Well, that's great and wonderful, but to that person, they're going to be like, okay, well, whoop de doo da day. You know, because when you're depressed, it's harder to begin to, or, or maybe you're down or upset, you know, or you're trying to sort of um, bring that joy into the now moment. It's harder, right? Because you need to know exactly what that verse is saying to you, how to be able to apply the verse. Applying a verse is where I think with the body of Christ, we've missed it. Applying scripture, you know, is, is I think the key element that we're, that's not taught. Because a lot of times we begin to say, hey, here's your scripture and I'm like okay so what do I do with this do I repeat it over and over again like a mantra do I meditate on that scripture in the sense of like home you know I mean what do I do right I mean you know it's like no one's telling the body of Christ what to do with these scriptures and so what we've got to do is begin to understand exactly how to apply scripture so today when we talk about um, creating an atmosphere of peace and we're going to dive a little bit into understanding relaxation but we're going to come to it in an in a, in a understanding of how to bring joy into that and here's how you need to learn to apply verses such as the joy of lord is my strength or be still and know that i'm god first of all in order to do that you have to understand there's several elements we've got to look at and that is no, what number one the word unfolding now one of the things we do in the body of christ and if many of you want to put that into the uh, on, on instagram and or facebook if many of you want to put that into into your notes and just put the words as i say them that would be amazing now people can go back and say oh look there's some of the notes of that that would mean the world to me but also it would mean the world to other people so i would definitely say and do that if you can so number one the key word is unfolding unfolding the reason why we want to use the word unfolding is because in you know uh People in the body of Christ, people really all over the world, for lack of better words, we really don't know 
what that means, what that looks like when we hear the word unfolding, because it's not a word we teach in, in church. I mean, let's just face it. You go to church, you're going to hear about people, you know, like, uh, thank you, Nicole. You're going to hear about people, you know, thing, saying things like, oh, here's the glory, here's the anointing, you know. And we get so caught up in all that hype and puff, you know, stuff that really doesn't mean anything, just makes us want to feel good for a moment, but there's not an application. I always say this, a true pastor, a true prophet, apostle, teacher, evangelist, a true these things are going to understand how to bring forth an application. If you can't bring forth an application, then don't teach because you're doing a dishonor to the word of God by bringing a disconnect because you're not actually allowing people to to connect to the revelation of what of how to apply that to their life. And so without an application, guess what? It means nothing. If you go to the store and you buy, let's say, for example, if you've got a big rash in your body and you go to the store and you're like, oh my gosh, I need something. And this woman's like, here, get this cream over here. And let's say you've never applied cream. You don't even know what cream means. And you go to the store, CVS or Walgreens or somewhere, or Ralph's, for those of you on the West Coast, you know, grocery store, you know, and, and you're sitting here thinking to yourself, you know, um, okay, I got this tube of stuff called cream, but what do I do with it? You know, I got, let's say you got this rash in your arm, you're like, uh, what do I do? You know, do I drink it? Do I snort it? Do I, you know, do I, what do I do? You know, because if you don't know what that means, that means that you're going to, you're not going to understand and it's going to be useless to you, but yet you might hold a tube that is antibacterial or a uh, sort of uh, antibiotic type of thing to get rid of something. But if you don't understand the word application, how to apply something, then it's meaningless to you. And I think that's where you can really tell those who are, who are, we'll say seasoned in the body of Christ to understand that if you don't know how to bring application, then don't teach or don't share because you can do more people harm than good because it's like saying this, if I have a knife in my hand and I say, hey, here you go, and I give that to a five-year-old child, you know, and I say, hey, this thing is sharp, even if I even if I tell them this thing is sharp, don't cut yourself with it, and they begin to take that knife, eventually they're going to cut themselves with it because they're not going to understand maybe the depth of how deep that knife could go into their into their skin or, or what it would feel like or how how or hard it would cut them. And if I didn't tell them, you know, in a child, if I gave them a knife and said, hey, go have fun, go play with it, right, which we never would do, but if we did, that child eventually is going to hurt himself or kill himself. And that's why, of course, I'm anti-gun anyway, but that's why if you think of guns, you know, you think of the same thing, you know, uh, no no, no person's going to leave their gun around or give it to the hands of a child, you know, or, or hopefully not even leave it around in a house anyway. That would be totally stupid. But the idea is realizing that, you know, you just don't put things into the way of other uh, of kids to begin to uh, uh, to be to you know to be there. Why? Because there's no application. We don't know unless a person is mature enough to say this is what you do. Here's the safety to this. Here's what you use it for. Don't do this and don't do that. Then there's if there's no application, you're wasting your time, right? And so when you see that, you have to begin to understand and realize that what's happening here is that when we look at the scripture that says the joy of the Lord is our strength, how do I apply that in a place of relaxation? We begin to understand, number one, unfolding. The number one word we don't use in church, which we should, is the word unfolding. Another word we don't use in church is metamorphosis. That's number two, Nicole, for those of you on there that want to take notes. Unfolding and, and metamorphosis. Now, you might hear me use these terms a lot. Because these are just these are these are powerful terms. Because if you think about every, if you think about God and how everything is is working in, in creation, you realize that everything in the universe unfolds. Everything in the universe evolves. Everything in the universe metamorphosizes to some degree. Because there's always a shedding off. I don't I don't care for snakes. You know, they are just sort of ugh. But you know you think of a snake. Snake sheds their skin. You shed your skin. You know. Um, uh, caterpillar to butterfly sheds their skin. And pretty much everything in creation, including all animals, will shed somehow or, you know, or, or, or you know, an old uh, uh, skin cells and let new ones begin to rebirth. So there's a place of metamorphosis for every one of us. There's a place of unfolding for every one of us. And if you, and if you leave these two out of the equation of not applying these in, in understanding, uh, you know, uh, uh, scriptures, principles, anything else you're trying to get to wrap your brain around, then you'll never get it. So how do we apply the joy of the Lord as our strength when we deal with um, unfolding? 
molding and metamorphosizing because of the fact we have to understand number one when we deal with what we call meditation it, you have to allow something to unfold to you nothing happens overnight you can't cook something you know instantly you can't I mean even the microwave you would at least take 30 seconds to an hour I mean to a minute but the truth is some things if not everything just does not taste good microwaved right and so the more you try to bring a quickie to something the less uh, nutrients the less value it'll mean to you the less it'll taste good to you the less this and that will happen because it just won't be quality everything in life deals with quality and time and so when you're dealing with applying the scriptures you have to understand that in this moment of me trying to apply my the joy of the Lord to my life the learning to relax which we'll get into a second that I've got to allow these things, these words that are powerful, to unfold themselves to me. In order for them to unfold themselves to me, I've got to learn to be still. In my stillness is when I know. Be still and know. Okay, let, let, I brought this forth weeks ago. I'll bring it out again. Be still. Number one king. Mormon key. Be still. Be still and know. And my stillness is when I start knowing. Knowing what? Knowing anything. Because I'm saturating myself in the, unf and I'm allowing whatever it is, I'm examining and viewing to unfold to me slowly. Be still and know that I'm God. So there's a lot of power in that verse because even if I'm, my stillness when I know God, I can't know God in my hyped moments of, of oohs and ahs and, and everything else in church. The knowing is in my stillness. If you want to know God, you're not going to find him shouting and screaming at church, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, all that's wonderful and great and we and we should praise God audibly. But what I'm saying though is that's, that God made a plain his word in chronolo chronological order that's not how you know him. And too many people trying to know God in the hyped moment, even within the corporate presence of God. That's not how you know God. That's when you feel and experience the power of God. And if you think about worship in church, it is it is the corporate part of it that where God expresses and brings forth the expression of God and manifests that way to people. But God, but knowing someone's expression doesn't mean you know them. Hello. I can sit here and smile all day long to you, but that doesn't mean you know me. You could be like, hey, he's smiling. I could be a crook, you know? I mean, so so, so you have to understand the knowing is in the stillness. And in and, and the stillness is where the unfolding takes place. That's when I truly know, know what it is I'm looking for, know what it, what it is I'm trying to understand, and know God more. And so you have to understand, number one, you have to allow everything to unfold to you. How do we allow things to unfold to us? We get in our still moment and begin to to, to allow the, the the flesh, the parts of our minds, to shut down. And you know, people say, "Oh, you know, p people that don't understand, they go with whatever any Tom, Dick, and Harry says, and what preachers say, and they'll say, oh, my pastor said, don't don't allow my mind to be quiet.'" And I'm like. Well, that's just like dumb because you would you would you would take half the scripture in the Bible and chunk them. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, you know, you even the Bible says to decrease that God can increase in you. If I decreasing means shut myself down and allow Him to arise in me. So if someone says, you know, don't allow your mind to be quiet. Then what they're saying is, don't allow Christ to come into you because the only way for him to come into you is by you shutting yourself down and allowing him to empower, to turn his power on. I decrease and shut myself down while he turns himself on with inside of me. I mean, come on. You know, see how re see how religion is so ridiculous that it affects us and we don't even realize how bad it's affecting us, you know? When people tell me that, you know, oh, my pastor said, don't allow my mind to be quiet. And I'm like, seriously, where do you come up with this stuff? You know, who's been smoking weed on, on, coming up with this stuff? You know what I mean? You're like, what's going on here? And so, you know, you have to realize that, that we're dealing with an Eastern religion. An East, Christianity is an Eastern religion. They understood these principles more than anything. Jews understand quietness. Trust me, I've been there several times. They understand quietness. They understand the power of, let me tell you this, most people don't realize this. Even when you think of the word mantra, people, people are like, oh my God, that sounds new age. It sounds like some kind of, hey, la, 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 you know, I mean, because, because, because of a lack of knowledge. And they think mantra. You know what a, the word mantra means? It literally means 
begins to, to ponder and chew on it over and over again. Keep on saying it over and over again. It, it's not a magic spell or magic peel. That's not what it means. It's not a new age term, even though it might be used a lot in spirituality. It is considered something that a cow does. I remember being 18 years old. No. 16 years old, and hearing my pastor talk about how we how we digest the Word of God. He says, you look at it like a cow. Now, this sounds a little nasty, but go with me. He says, a cow takes its food, chews it up for a little bit, swallows it, and then regurgitates it back up. This is so gross. And then chews on it again, swallows it again, regurgitates it back up, and chews on it again. It sounds disgustingly gross, but the truth is, that's how we take the Word of God, is we digest it, and we keep on chewing on it over and over again. That, that, that's just how, that's how nature is. That's how God created nature to be. How much more should we apply things of nature when God even says, you know, you can see me in nature. The Bible says that. Then how many times do we, or nature will reveal itself and reveal as a God. So how many times do we not understand what it means to be still, to, to mantra, to, to ponder on something, to meditate upon it over and over again. The only way to do that is to let it unfold to you. Allow it to speak to you. Allow it to unfold to you. And then we metamorphosize through the very thing that we are that it, we are allowing to slowly creep into us. As it unfolds itself to us, then we allow it to begin to metamorphosize us. Because why? Because the two shall become one. We allow what it is that we're, 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 that we're reading about in God's Word to absorb in us. If I put a cream on my skin, I don't say, I don't put it on and say, Man, it worked. Wow, I can feel it. Look, it's already gone already. No. We, we, rub, we rub a cream, let's say, on a fungus or a, I don't know, if you have a rash, I don't know. You know, if you have something and you put a cream on it, guess what? It takes hours and days. Why? Because it slowly absorbs into the skin or into the bloodstream or whatever it is. You're, it absorbs. It takes time. Time has to be your friend. And when things absorb right? What happens is when it absorbs into you, then it can start working. It's not going to happen overnight or instantly. And the reason why, because everything in creation goes through a a metamorphosizing, absorbing mentality. And if you think about it, they're, about the, they're near the same because when the caterpillar cocoons himself, he absorbs the cells of the of the butterfly already in him. To, he absorbs them to come to the outside. So what happens? The caterpillar decreases Shuts himself down. Oh, new age, right? Uh, he shuts himself down, and he allows what? The power of the butterfly cells in him to come alive in him. Think about that. Isn't that when we go to the doctor, hey, I'm sick. Well, you know, you got your, your, you know, your white blood cell count is down. You know, I mean, because you can tell. And so the cells begin to rejuvenate themselves. They begin to, uh, you know, to, 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 to cleanse and begin to do things. And so it affects our immunity. And so when you think about the idea of, absorbing and metamorphosizing you're dealing with this God to take time to get through to penetrate to 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 to, to shift and to then metamorphosize what's inwards to come outward and do its part and so that's how you apply the Word of God so when we're dealing with relaxation and joy we're dealing with applying applying by allowing it to speak to us and slowly absorb, allow our beingness to absorb what it is God wants us to know, and then we begin to become the thing that we're absorbing. But you can't do it unless you allow it to unfold before you. I can go by, I can go outside and say, hey, that looks, that looks like a, uh, you know, a dandelion, and if it has nothing on it, or rose, if I look at this thorny thing and I pick it and I and I pluck it and the ground and I'm like, yeah, this look, this is a rose stem. It's got the thorns on, on it. This is a rose stem. I can put it into water. It's never going to bud because I just ripped it out of its root. And I put it in water and it has no bud and it's in the winter. It's not going to do any good. I'm not going to say, oh, give it time, give it time. It'll it'll bud in this in this water. No, because I've taken it out of its environment from in the ground. Because why? Because things have to be be done first in the depth. In the deep part, when when something is in the depth or the or the deep part of, of the groundwork or the foundation, then it begins to work with time. Then it begins to work with water. Then it begins to work with you know with everything else. It, it, it works with the unfolding as the seasons unfold themselves to the to the rose. Then the rose will know when to slowly uh, uh, envelop itself in the, in its environment when it gets into the right season, and then it absorbs the sunlight. Absorbs the it literally does. It pulls in from the atmosphere, and then all of a sudden it knows automatically when to metamorphosize. In other words, when to begin to allow the rose to come forward. Because everything in creation does absorb its 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 um 
It's, it's, it's environment. It does. And so you have to understand that's when we begin to look and realize that if I want to begin to enjoy the depths of peace, enjoy the depths of joy, I've got to allow myself to be still. I can't afford my, for myself to, uh, to, 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 uh, uh, to hurry something. Then I will jeopardize or sabotage myself. When you are in a place of being upset, being down, needing to relax, needing to uh, learn to get in God's peace, you've got to begin to hush. You got to begin to take in the now moment and begin to say, oh, "Lord, I'm absorbing the atmosphere. I'm absor absorbing what is happening around me, because that way it can begin to happen what is on the inside of me." And that's the key thing we have to begin to understand. And when that happens, life then begins to to take its course, because we've allowed ourselves the respect and the honor of of life and 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 the seasons and the the things around us to unfold themselves to us then we begin to absorb what it is that's unfolding to us, right? That's how we begin to understand. Taking deep breaths, learning to relax is a key element here. And most people say, I need to, you know, I need God's peace. I'm going to go to a meeting. You're not going to find that. I mean, not that you can't, but the key thing is when, you know, it's like saying this. It, that's like me saying this. It's like me saying, uh, now I don't like this, this, this group, but let's just go there. It's like me saying, hey, you know, um, I, I want to be able to have peace. I'm going to go to a Motley Crue concert. You know, hey, I want to learn to re 